So today is the first trip across the ice shelf to visit a live to Mahali site. We're going to a site called TTO2, which is about a two and a half hour journey across the ice shelf. Uh, we'll stop for a single break along the way, uh, repair the site, and then come back to the base probably towards dinner time. So we'll leave at maybe seven in the morning and get back at 6 p.m. What we're doing now is called something called linked travel. When you're going across an ice shelf, you don't know what's underneath you. There could be cracks, there could be crevasses, there could be a lot of holes that you might fall into. Now, it's mostly pretty safe because on an ice shelf, everything is uh, moving at the same rate, but still there's a risk. So we do something called linked travel. Now, every skimmobile and every skidoo is linked together by this rope that I'm attaching now. So if any skidoo falls down a crevasse, the other skidoos will catch it. They'll be like an anchor and we will basically dangle down this big hole. So this is what a Live to Mahali site raise looks like. If you didn't watch my previous video, a Live to Mahali site is basically just a really accurate GPS point. And as the ice moves um, and the ice shelf flows into the sea, this point is moving. And so we can track the ice movement, see how it's shifting, how it's rotating, see if any cracks or shears are, are, are developing between two points. Um, and all this data is analyzed by scientists to make sure that the ice shelf is safe enough to be on. These are the battery boxes. Each battery box has two lead acid batteries in them and they weigh about 100 kilos each. They are so heavy. Round two, fight! Yeah, that's good. Yep. Cheese wiring. Did you add two more of these? I'll put one on the other side and then join them. Final up. round. Fight! <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. It's gonna break out here. Finish him! Fatality! No, the pole slipped. Okay. We try. Yeah. We need more than. Yeah, me and Days tried it. We couldn't get it. So, we might need more than two people. There's quite a steep learning curve out here and what I discovered while doing this site is that you never leave your gloves on the ground. The gloves are made from leather and um, my gloves froze solid 
and I couldn't wear them. I tried to warm them up and ended up making my hands so cold that when I put on my second pair of gloves to warm them up, I got hot aches, which was like a really severe pins and needles, and it was freezing. So I quickly learned that the best way to store your gloves is to stuff it down your jacket pocket so the leather doesn't freeze. What happens is you get a lot of snow accumulation, I think about one meter, one meter and a half every year. So this hole you see is where the old battery boxes were. Um, this isn't even the deepest hole we've dug so far, but this is about two meters. What we do is we dig out all the battery boxes and all the electronics and we raise them to the surface. So this is what it looks like as we leave the site. So you can see a wind turbine, GPS antenna, the electronics and a radio antenna. And when we come back next year, they will all be buried right up to the top. So um, this is the GPS antenna. This has to stay in this position. Even when we raise it, we need to keep the pole in this position. And this is the radio mast, which is sending the data back to Halley. So this is orientated, so Halley is actually in that direction over there. And this is the GPS control box, which Ollie is now programming to come on at a certain time of the day. These are the two boxes which have been raised to the surface. So these two battery boxes are charged by the wind turbine which is here, which only gives enough charge in a really strong blow um, to actually give the batteries a bit of a kick, but mostly charged by the solar panel, which is here. Um, now the solar panel is facing north because as the sun goes down in the winter, that, that's the horizon where the sun's gonna set. So the solar panel is facing north, so it will get the last of the summer sun to give that battery a last minute top up for the winter ahead. now about 7 p.m. and we are starving. We've just had a sandwich for lunch and some tea, so we are ready for food, but we first need to clear away all the stuff. Uh, so when you come back to base, first things first is to mark yourself on base. What you're about to see is called the tag board. The tag board is really important because you need to know where everyone is. A station leader needs to know where everyone is on the station. So when you are going to any building, you have to put your tag in that building. And if you're off the base, you need to put your tag in the off the base. Um, port. That way everyone knows where everyone is at any time and if someone's needed or someone's lost they know exactly where to find them. There are lots of outhouses and cabooses that are quite spread out on the base. One example is the CAS lab. Now the CAS lab is a uh, air monitoring station so it has lots of uh, science experiments that are to do with monitoring air pollution and it has to be about a kilometre away from base purely because of all the air pollution that the machines give off. Um, and if you're out there and you, no one knows, then it's going to be quite a dangerous situation. If you slip, if something happens to you, um, people need to know where you are. So I've marked all my team in, and now we have to put the skadoos to sleep. This involves putting away all the equipment and uh, all the stuff we've taken out with us regarding the experiment. And then we have to cover the skadoos, fill them with petrol, and make sure that if there's a strong blizzard or blow, that they don't get bogged up with snow and that they're safe and we can find them easily. Can I get it to start? What's it doing? Starting. What is the GPS? That's the GPS, yeah. Rev it for like 30 seconds and close the choke. Is that our wood? Is that our wood? You guys are legends, thanks. <laughs> 